Hi there, this is Pastor John from Portland Metro Church, coming to you on the third Sunday now of the COVID virus uh, church closings, and want to bring you a word from God um, that I believe the Lord has put on my heart. Uh, just before I do, I want to share a couple of quick things. First of all, uh, we are still not having actual physical church services, but we are sending out videos uh, at least uh, once a week from me um, with a Bible message. Um, and then also Pastor Diana, our next gen pastor, is sending out videos and activities and devotional uh, items through the week. And they are great object lessons and great encouragements through the week. So please view those as well on our Portland Metro Church uh, YouTube channel. Um, the Wednesday night Bible study that we make uh, in a paper form and, use, and we usually pass out on Wednesday night. We do make those available uh, on our Facebook page and we uh, send them out as an email attachment. So if you would like those, if you're not already on our list and you'd like those, please feel free to uh, call the church, uh, area code 503-287-4825. Again, 503-287-4825. And, uh, and or let us know on our Facebook page that you would like uh, a copy of that Wednesday night Bible study that we uh, make off of the Sunday message. Uh, we'll be happy to get that to you. Uh, thank you for sending in your tithes and offerings and uh, remembering the church um, in your giving. We also uh, support a lot of missionaries, and so please uh, keep those faith promises coming in and, and those missionary offerings coming in. Uh, because we uh, we make it a very high priority to keep our missionary faith promises and keep our missionary commitments current. Uh, we will uh, sacrifice other things in order to be sure that those uh, keep going where they're going. And, and especially, uh, let me ask you to pray for our missionaries. They uh, desperately need our prayers. God is moving and doing great things through them, and uh, they need our prayers. Uh, please um, stop for a few minutes at noon and continue to pray for uh, God to come and heal our world of this COVID virus. It's nice to hear that in some countries they have already uh, peaked and they're uh, now having less incidences, less infections of the virus, and that is good news. Hopefully we will hear that uh, about our state and our nation soon, but uh, if you would join with us, and our general superintendent has asked us as churches to stop and pray at noon uh, on Friday, but we are encouraging everyone to pray every day on Friday. Uh, now, as we uh, come to the Word of God, I want to share with you what I believe the Lord has put on my heart to share with you this week. It's called My COVID-19 Prayer List for America. As I was praying for our country this week, the Lord just began to put uh, several things heavy on my heart to share with you. Um, in fact, a couple of things that happened this week that kind of prompted this. First of all, uh, I've heard the words desperate times and unprecedented times uh, many times this week. And although our nation has been through difficult times, pandemics, uh, challenges, uh, huge challenges, world wars, um, this is obviously a different time frame now. Uh, this is a different situation because we see the uptick, as it were, in numbers of things happening. Earthquakes, wars, disease, uh, various other things that the prophets and, and even our Lord Jesus told us would come in the last of the last days. 
And so it is not a surprise that we are seeing more of them happen. Uh, it is a fulfillment of prophecy. I've also seen a renewed hunger for God in my conversations with both believers and non-believers. And it has been exciting to hear testimonies of people in our church uh, of seeing a renewed and a, and a for the first time, a hunger for God in their family members and friends and neighbors and co-workers that are hungry for God. And, and that is a huge answer to prayer uh, and, and a big sign that Jesus is coming soon. Uh, it's also, it was a highlight this week to see uh, Franklin Graham uh, on television talking about the help that Samaritan's Purse is doing uh, by providing uh, hospitals and uh, medical equipment. Uh, but it was, it was even more wonderful to uh, see him not only talk about Samaritan's Purse, but then the, the television anchor uh, just gave him freedom and permission to preach the gospel for a few minutes. It was wonderful. And uh, it was great to hear the gospel going out as Franklin Graham, uh, like his father, Billy, just very clearly presented the simple gospel of putting your faith in Jesus and trusting in him and and letting him come and, and set up his kingdom in your life. That's what it's all about, friends. I also had another exciting thing as, as I was listening on the radio to Mike Lindell, the, the My Pillow guy, talk about what his and other companies are doing to provide the personal protection equipment that our frontline medical workers need. And then after that, he, he, uh, pivoted to sharing uh, his own the burden on his heart of asking our nation to seek God, to pray, and to read the Bible. It was wonderful to hear that. Yes, friends, these are unprecedented, unparalleled, desperate times that we live in, and we need the Lord. We need God. America needs God. Our world needs God, and and our world needs us to pray for it. I want to take you first of all to Second Chronicles chapter 7 verses 14 and 15 because I want you to hear this cry from the heart of God. It says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their lands. And then it goes on to say, my eyes will always be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. Of course, that was originally talking about the uh, Solomon's temple that was being dedicated to the Lord on that day and the Lord responding to them. And I believe that that great promise of God comes down to you and me, that if we will pray, if we will repent, if we'll seek his face, then he will hear our prayers and he will come and heal our land. I want to take you to a New Testament promise as well and a New Testament call to repent in Acts chapter 3 verses 19 and 20. It says, now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. And he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. So friends, if we will pray, God will hear our prayers, forgive our sins, uh, and he will hurry the coming of Jesus, the return of Jesus, the second coming, the rapture, all of those wonderful things. Really, friends, the Bible is telling us that this is the time to draw near to God, to seek him and to to follow after him. We need to pray and seek God and ask him to heal our land of the coronavirus, but we also need to uh, repent of our sins and ask God for his forgiveness. And the Bible says, and we know from personal practical experience, he will forgive our sins and send us the needed refreshing of his presence. Our city, 
Portland, Oregon, and our nation need us to pray for the health of our city and the health of our nation. And, and here are four things I would like to suggest that we pray for the health of. And the first one is we need to pray for the health of the heart of our nation. A passage of scripture that I memorized first as a young child. Psalm 19 verse 14 says, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, in this version it says, Be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. God is calling us to pray for the heart of our city, for our hearts to be in the right place, that 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 the meditations of our personal hearts, but also the meditations of the heart of our city and the actions of the heart of our city would be pleasing to God, that we would change our priorities and in the changing of our priorities to line up with God's priorities, then our city would change its priorities. Our nation would change its priorities to line up with the things that please the Lord. Friends, it's time to draw near to God. We need to draw near to God so that our hearts will be changed. The Bible tells us that our mouth speaks what is in our heart, and so we need our heart to change so that our mouth will speak the things that will be pleasing to God and that our mind will think the things that will be pleasing to God. The only way our hearts and the heart of our nation will change is if we draw near to God and do those things that are pleasing to Him. The second thing that I want to invite you to pray for the health of is to pray for the health of our families, the families of our nation. I see a lot of families in pain, a lot of individuals in pain that, that uh, you know, it's a cause and effect. When, when individuals are in pain, then, then the effect is families are going to be in pain and God wants to come and heal the brokenness in our lives and in our families. And he wants to come and show us how to heal our families. And he wants to come and heal them too. The Bible says in a great Old Testament uh, prophecy in Malachi chapter 4 verse 6, it says these wonderful words in uh, an end time prophecy. It says, God will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will turn the hearts of the children to their fathers. There will be a healing of relationships, and God is calling families into right relationship with him and in right relationship with each other. And so God is calling us to pray for families to turn their hearts to God. Families must be built on a strong foundation of the Bible which teaches that proper authority structure, uh, a mom and a dad that are co-equals in authority and in influence, working together, praying together, seeking God together to lead their families to love and serve the Lord, and families that are based on healthy uh, principles from the Bible, that uh, especially uh, fathers taking the responsibility of keeping the family united, keeping the family loving, and keeping the family strong. God is calling fathers to love their children by praying for them and spending time with them and teaching them to live by what God tells us to live by in the Bible. In fact, the Bible uh, also uh, gives us this warning that our prayers will be hindered if we mistreat our spouse or mistreat our children, we want our prayers to not be hindered. And so we want to be careful to uh, treat our spouse right and to treat our children right and to lead them to love and serve the Lord. Quickly, let me tell you the third thing to pray that I feel the Lord's calling me to pray for. And I want to invite you to pray about, and that is to pray for the health of our churches. Now, more than ever, friends, we need to pray for and hold up our brothers and sisters in Christ to pray for and encourage every believer to be strong in their faith 
And we also need to pray for the churches, that their ministries will be saying and doing what God tells us to say and do in the Bible. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 16 say, You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Friends, God wants you and me to be salty for him. He wants us to go out and spread the flavor of his love and grace and and his kindness, his goodness with everybody we can. He wants us to be bright lights for him. He wants us to shine his light uh, in every place we can and, and spread his love everywhere we can. Another great passage of scripture about praying for the health of our churches is Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. It says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. 